So after my last video, I got a lot of questions about uh, the Explosive Arrow Pathfinder build that I was using. I'm going to go over the build, uh, but if you don't need any detailed explanation of a, an Explosive Arrow build, the trees in the description, I used oak, uh, I got the bandits oak, crate, and crate. I used a single target setup and a chance to ignite single arrow with the conk effect, fire pen, uh, less duration, uh, slow projectiles. Aside from that, the only other uniques I used are rear guard, combs, and uh, the three unique flasks, Vingtar, uh, Rumi's, and uh, Taste of Hate. My sentency choices are Master Alchemist and Master Surgeon. So that's the overview, and here's the sales pitch. Uh, so the question I keep getting asked is why Pathfinder? Well, I really like Adrenal Quicksilver Flask on a Pathfinder. You might think I'm joking, but that's probably because you never ran this on a Pathfinder. But really, Explosive Arrow has always been pretty solid. There's a lot of good choices in terms of ascendancies. Explosive Arrow's damage is pretty good, and the life pool is pretty high, so choosing a defensive ace, uh, ascendancy is a pretty good choice. That's why I chose Pathfinder. Um, and this is what it provides for me. Um, Master Alchemist gives me immunity to status ailments, which allows me to run Vinktars and uh, ignore shock and chilled ground, and I don't need to re uh, roll a freeze removal flask for boxes. Also gives 40% elemental damage, which is good for explosive arrow. It also gives me 20% chance to shock, freeze, and ignite during flask effect, uh, which means uh, with this tree and a quality explosive arrow, I have a 94% chance to ignite without uh, the chance from flammability, which puts me over 100%. Nature Spoon reduces elemental damage taken by 8%, which is like having plus 2 max res, though I don't think it affects Reflect, I'm not 100% sure on that. Flask effect, uh, Flex uh, charges gained uh, every 3 seconds, it's a novelty, but it helps for running trials and traps, um, and the 20% chance to not consume flask charges is pretty nice, especially for Vintars, because it only gets one use. Uh, Nature's Adrenaline gives me attack speed and movement speed, which are really good for Explosive Arrow. And I went for a Master Surgeon instead of Veteran Boyer, uh, because I liked, uh, I was going for a burn setup and I used Elemental Equilibrium. And the 10% physical damage gained as a random element uh, messes with e Equilibrium too much. Uh, since I was going for the Ignite, the lowering of the resistance was better than uh, uh, Penetration. If you're running E, if you're not running EE, then uh, Boyer is definitely the better choice. Uh, the damage pen is pretty nice. The 100% flask uh, charges gain is pretty good, especially for Vintars. And if uh, anyone in GGG is listening, please remove that random element thing and give me something I can't control, please. Uh, but if you're not running Master Surgeon, you don't. Uh, you'll need a bleed flask. I don't need a bleed flask with this setup because I can generally just click any flask to remove it. To, add, uh, to all that, uh, Pathfinder gets a lot of flask effectiveness, flask duration, and flask charges gained. Uh, my unique flasks last 8 seconds. My Quicksilver, this experimenters, um, lasts for 10 seconds. Explosive arrow uh, clears pretty fast generally, so it's easy to sustain from pack to pack. Uh, my usual flask setup has pretty high uh, physical mitigation with Rumi's and Taste of Hate, and a good amount of uh, block. 65 uh, for attack and 33 for spell, and uh, high lightning and cold resistance, 84 uh, percent on each when I uh, pop the flask. Tree explanation. Well, if you've seen explosive arrow trees before, this is pretty straightforward. Get life, get blood magic, get projectile, fire, area, damage, and radius, uh, whatever appropriate. Resolute technique is too far away, uh, so I opted for elemental overload instead. Uh, you'll attack pretty fast and proc it pretty often, and um, since you're attacking pretty fast, um, with an 85% chance to hit on my current gear, missing is not really an, uh, an issue. Uh, aside from that, get Alchemist for your flask effect. For jewels, uh, get maximum life and resistances to overcap for early weakness. And then get fire, projectile damage, or area damage. Fire damage rolls the highest. Uh, since you get five jewel slots and possibly six, uh, I was considering the one next to Elementalist. The extra points, uh, the extra damage points end up adding up over time. Uh, other than that, just uh, attack speed is pretty nice as well. Uh, attack speed for bows. My gem setups are for explosive arrow, GMP, fire pen, 
uh, less duration, life leech, slower projectiles. If you got a life leech enchant on boots, I'd swap out a uh, life leech gem with increased AoE or chance to ignite. I would drop uh, slow projectiles for chance to ignite or increased AoE, but I, I ran out of chromes and never really bothered after that attempt. Uh, I already mentioned the single target setup is explosive arrow, fire pen, conk effect, chance to ignite, less duration, slow projectiles. I, I have a casting damage taken, immortal call, vortex setup. I don't have space for GMP for arctic breath. Uh, other gems I use are Blink Arrow, Frost Wall with Echo, Decoy Totem, and Stone Golem, but you can replace the Golem with anything. For leveling up and gearing, uh, this was my league starter, so it's not as smooth as if you start later in the league. Grab pr the projectile nodes, uh, the projectile damage nodes uh, near Ranger and Duelist. You can use either bow leveling or projectile spell leveling. Um, until you can use explosive arrow. Explosive arrow itself is pretty bad without GMP and blood magic. Uh, GMP is 38 uh, level requirement and you can reach blood magic by then. You'll need some uh, life regen which you can get on the way. Um, during this league start I got a jeweler's touch as soon as I reached uh, cruel and I bought the cheapest quill rain and uh, used the prophecy since it didn't care about the item level and used that 5 link and it carried me all the way through. Um, I later found a crappy 5 link for uh, my other explosive arrow setup and uh, later on in maps uh, in Merciless I found uh, another jeweler's touch and uh, belly of the beast and that carried me to 90. You can use a tabula since, uh, uh, while leveling up since you get a lot of life on the tree. After getting the blood magic uh, node, uh, you can head through the sign life wheel up towards the witch and templar. I went towards the witch first for the AOE, the life, the fire damage, and the, al uh, the alchemist node. And then I went to templar last. Um, and uh, I also grabbed the uh, elemental overload on the way to witch. You can start using rear guard when you start capping uh, uh, resistance and you're good on life. Once you have rear guard, I would recommend your first uh, unique flask be Rumi's Concoction. I went to level 93 on an iron skin basalt flask and uh, never worried about physical damage. So Taste of Hate was really a luxury. I only bought it because I was going to start fighting Doreso in, in Colosseum for the first time and I've never fought him there before. I wasn't sure how much damage he ends up doing. Uh, Vinktars has a level 68 requirement. It's not as necessary until you're doing uh, more dangerous boss fights later on uh, for uh, because you want the extra damage to kill them quickly. Uh, I always rotated this flask spot depending on the situation. Aside from the Quicksilver, my last uh, flask is a life flask. Since I have Master Surgeon, I use Curse Immune flask. I also had a, an extra cur a Quicksilver, uh, this Curse Immune for Izaro when he had Curses active. It also helps in Do Dodri's... Uh, curse area if you're planning on doing that fight. After Belly of the Beast, I used a lightning coil for a little while before I could afford uh, Combs Heart. It was a 5 link fi a lightning coil. You could still stick around with Belly of the Beast, uh, you can make a choice for either. The life difference is about 300 to 400 and your physical mitigation, mitigation is already pretty high with Rumi's and a basalt flask. And also you won't need to cap resist as hard uh, without a lightning coil. Uh, I didn't use any other uniques for my build. Other options include Essence Swarm for Purity of Fire, Devotos uh, for the extra movement and attack speed, and uh, Blood Dance for Frenzy Charge Generation if you're not using uh, Frenzy to Curse on Hit. I just got Life, Resistance, and Chaos Resistance. For some reason in Merciless I have 59 Chaos Res. There's no reason for anybody to have that much. I still wish my boots had Chaos Res though. I used uh, two 5 link quill reins when I had my combs and I handled most content. I never fought Doreso while having a 5 link, but I did Vinktar farming, conservatory, palace, and comb on a 5 link setup for my single target. Uh, I went the burn route instead of the frost wall route because the frost wall route has never been consistent enough for me. Uh, where would I improve my gear? All aside from getting a plus one arrow rear guard. I actually wanted to run Life Leech Enchant on boots instead of the Life Leech gem on uh, my Quill Rain. I also wanted to get a maybe get a plus one Curse Amulet. Uh, that'll allow me to use instead of uh, GMP uh, a Frenzy, 
either split arrow or uh, brain of arrows and um, use either enfeeble or elemental weakness or warlord's mark i'll probably go with a uh, blue slot for enfeeble on most maps and ellie weakness on fire resistance or enfeeble enfeeble maps uh empower level three is not worth it it's only a 25 percent more multiplier compared to less duration and slower projectiles which get 30. empower level four would replace uh slower projectiles Mapping on this build. Uh, elemental reflect maps are a no-go. Single reflect mobs are not a problem. If you slow down a tiny bit, you don't have to unload your giant single uh, target arrow on, on a rare ma uh, mob at all. Most rares I just skill with the GMP setup without switching. Uh, that said, be careful. If they're surrounded by a lot of enemies, you might take a lot of damage that way. Uh, I skip over uh, elemental status immunity maps, uh, though you might make a case for using a frostwall setup for those maps. You need uh, leech to run no regen maps. Hexproof maps are really annoying. Uh, temp chain maps are you'll still you'll start loving the adrenaline quicksilver flask. I generally rotated the Vinktar flask uh, for whatever added elemental damage uh, that the map might have. So a ruby flask if there's added fire damage, for example. Uh, for running lab, it's pretty straightforward. Quicksilver uh, Adrenaline Flask lets you run through most gauntlets pretty quickly uh, without even needing to use a movement skill. Uh, you can wait before Azaro to charge up your flask in case you want to switch out flask for particular situations. For Argus, you need to decoy him to a corner and uh, use the overlap of GMP explosives or use a frost wall. So that's about it. Uh, there are plenty of explosive arrow builds out there and guides for them which explain in detail everything you need to know about explosive arrow. As far as the highest end content is concerned, uh, this character died in hardcore uh, to a disconnect against the plaza map boss. But I was farming twin versions of all the highest tier maps except for core as explained in my map video. I tried Core Malachi in standard after I managed to, after I managed the first time to do it with one easily avoidable death. Uh, the second time I managed to do it deathless, but they were easy core maps. They're nothing crazy, and they weren't twin cores. Uh, I tried my very first Uber at Ziri. I managed to get to at Ziri herself deathless uh, pretty easily, but because I'm not that experienced with at Ziri and the frost wall setup. I didn't and I didn't change my gear from my hardcore setup. Uh, I lost all my portals when she effectively had no life left. Turns out I wasn't uh, capped enough for my flammability curse being reflected at me. And with the curse immune flask, I would survive a flame blast. Uh, without it, I would die in, in one shot. Uh, with practice and better gearing, it is doable. And if you've got better skills than me, go ahead and give it a shot. But I'm not going to do it in hardcore, and that's and I don't have the currency to keep uh, practicing this. I hope this answers all your questions about this build. And if you're interested in trying it, I hope it does as well for you as it did for me. Enjoy.